A bombshell claim about UFOs. A former U.S. intelligence official, an Air Force veteran, claims a top secret program is withholding evidence of alien spacecrafts. For decades, the topic of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, and its stories has captured the imagination of people worldwide. However, Recent revelations by none other than David Grush have reignited public interest and raised questions about the possibility of alien presence on our planet. David Grush handed over extensive classified information to Congress and the intelligence community inspector general, saying it exposes top secret programs that have retrieved and studied debris from alien spacecraft. What did David Grush discover? How does it relate to Bob Lazar's revelations? And what role did Joe Rogan play in bringing this discovery to light? Join us as we explore the claims of UFO whistleblower David Grush, uncovering a startling secret. Aliens are present on Earth. NASA hearing on UFO sightings around the world. It's now our collective responsibility to investigate these occurrences with the rigorous scientific scrutiny that they deserve. The government's knowledge a decades-long cover-up? Throughout history, there have been numerous reports of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, and encounters with beings from beyond our world. These sightings date back centuries, with accounts of strange lights in the sky and mysterious beings appearing in ancient texts and folklore. In more recent times, the United States government has been accused of hiding the truth about UFOs and alien activity on Earth. One of the most famous incidents occurred in 1947 in Roswell, New Mexico, where the military initially claimed to have recovered a crashed weather balloon, but later changed their story, sparking rumors of a cover-up. Since then, there have been countless reports of UFO sightings around the world, many of which have been investigated by government agencies such as the U.S. Air Force's Project Blue Book. While some sightings have been attributed to natural phenomena or experimental aircraft, Others remain unexplained, fueling speculation about extraterrestrial visitations. In the 1980s, a former physicist named Bob Lazar claimed to have worked at a top-secret facility known as Area 51, where he allegedly reverse-engineered alien spacecraft. Lazar's assertions, while controversial, reignited public interest in the UFO phenomenon and raised questions about the government's involvement in studying extraterrestrial technology. In recent years, the U.S. government has made efforts to declassify and release previously classified documents related to UFO sightings and investigations. However, many skeptics argue that these disclosures are merely a smokescreen to distract from more pressing issues or to maintain control over the narrative surrounding UFOs. Despite the government's attempts to downplay the significance of UFO sightings, public interest in the phenomenon remains strong. With advances in technology and the proliferation of social media, individuals around the world are increasingly able to document and share their encounters with UFOs, further challenging official explanations. While the truth about UFOs and alien activity on Earth remains elusive, one thing is clear. The government's role in investigating and concealing these phenomena continues to be a subject of debate and speculation. As more information comes to light, it is up to the public to remain vigilant and demand transparency from those in power. The notion of government involvement in concealing information about UFOs is not new. Since the infamous Roswell incident of 1947, where the military initially reported a crashed weather balloon, speculation has persisted about the true nature of the wreckage and its possible extraterrestrial origins. Over the years, Whistleblowers like Bob Lazar have come forward, claiming to have worked on reverse engineering alien technology at secretive government facilities like Area 51. Another fresh testimony that raises our curiosity is David Grush's revelation. Three military veterans testified in Congress's highly anticipated hearing on UFOs Wednesday, including a former Air Force intelligence officer who claimed the U.S. government has operated a secret multi-decade reverse engineering program of recovered vessels. He also said the U.S. has recovered non-human biologics from alleged crash sites. But while the topic of little green men did come up, 
Much of the discussion centered on improving processes for reporting unidentified aerial phenomena, or UAPs. The military's term for UFOs increasingly UAP refers to anomalous, rather than aerial phenomena, to account for sightings in both air and water. There are also calls to remove the stigma for aviators who report UAP sightings and to ensure oversight of government programs that investigate them. Retired Major David Grush, who went from being part of the Pentagon's UAP task force to becoming a whistleblower, told the House Oversight Committee's National Security Subcommittee that he had been denied access to some government UFO programs, but that he knows the exact locations of UAPs in U.S. possession. In response to public interest and political pressure, federal and military agencies have shared a trove of information about unexplained aircraft encounters. But many sightings have been found to be of pedestrian origin, from weather balloons to drones, airborne trash, and birds. The Defense Department spokeswoman Susan Gauff issued a statement saying the Pentagon's inquiries had not turned up any verifiable information to substantiate claims that any programs regarding the possession or reverse engineering of extraterrestrial materials have existed in the past or exist currently, as the Associated Press reports. Grush also alleged that the U.S. has retrieved non-human biological matter from the pilots of the crafts, adding, that was the assessment of people with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. While he refrained from sharing any further information in the public hearing, Grush offered to disclose details behind closed doors. Grush said he hasn't personally seen any alien vehicles or alien bodies, and that his opinions are based on the accounts of over 40 witnesses he interviewed over four years in his role with the UAP task force. According to Grusher, his testimony was based on information given to him by individuals with a long-standing track record of legitimacy and service to this country, many of whom also shared compelling evidence in the form of photography, official documentation, and classified oral testimony. Grush also said that the trove of evidence has been intentionally kept secret from Congress. Several times during the hearing, Grush deflected lawmakers' questions, saying he could only elaborate in a skiff, a sensitive, compartmented information facility. Those instances include when he was asked if the government had had any contact with aliens and whether anyone had been murdered to cover up information about extraterrestrial technology. Grush said he couldn't comment. The former intelligence officer also told the panel that he and several other colleagues have been the targets of administrative terrorism and that he has at times feared for his life since coming forward. It was very brutal and very unfortunate. Some of the tactics they used to hurt me both professionally and personally, he said, adding that there is currently an open investigation into the matter. This adds another layer to this narrative, suggesting that the government may have been aware of UFO activity for far longer than previously acknowledged. With leaked documents and testimonies from insiders, Grush paints a disturbing picture of a clandestine operation aimed at concealing the truth about alien visitations. What exactly were the findings of David Grush? Why did he decide to speak out? Let's dive deeper! Joe Rogan's podcast, a platform for disclosure. In a riveting episode of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, David Grush sat down with the renowned host to share his astonishing account of encountering extraterrestrial beings. The podcast session provided a platform for Grush to divulge details of his experiences and the evidence he claims to possess, captivating millions of listeners around the globe. Rogan, known for his open-minded approach to unconventional topics, probed Grush with insightful questions, delving deep into the implications of his revelations. The conversation sparked widespread debate and renewed interest in the UFO phenomenon, prompting further investigation and scrutiny. Joe Rogan, the renowned podcaster and commentator, has long been fascinated by the mysteries of the universe. In a recent episode of his wildly popular podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, Rogan delved deep into the world of UFO activities with guest David Grush, a former military pilot with a remarkable story to tell. David Grush's military background goes from the skies to the stars. His journey into the world of UFO investigations began during his time in the military. 
As a seasoned pilot, with years of experience flying missions around the world, Grush had encountered his fair share of strange and unexplained phenomena in the skies. It was during one of these missions that Grush's life would change forever. While flying over a remote area, he encountered a series of unidentified flying objects, unlike anything he had ever seen before. These objects exhibited extraordinary maneuvers and speeds, defying the laws of physics and leaving Grush in awe and disbelief. Intrigued by his encounter, Grush began to delve deeper into the world of UFO research, scouring declassified military documents and speaking with fellow pilots and experts in the field. What he discovered would shake him to his core and lead him down a path of discovery that would ultimately culminate in his appearance on the Joe Rogan Experience. Joe Rogan's podcast session with David Grush was a journey into the unknown. During their podcast session, Rogan wasted no time in getting to the heart of the matter. He peppered Grush with questions about his military background, his encounters with UFOs, and the implications of his findings for humanity as a whole. One of the first questions Rogan asked Grush was about the nature of his encounters with UFOs during his time in the military. Grush recounted his experiences in vivid detail, describing the awe-inspiring sight of seeing these mysterious objects darting across the sky with unmatched speed and agility. Rogan also delved into Grush's research into the government's involvement in UFO investigations. Grush revealed that he had uncovered a wealth of evidence suggesting that the government had been aware of UFO activities for decades and had gone to great lengths to conceal the truth from the public. But perhaps the most fascinating aspect of their conversation was Grush's revelations about the potential implications of UFO activities for humanity. He spoke passionately about the need for greater transparency and accountability from government agencies and the importance of preparing for the possibility of extraterrestrial contact. According to Grush, his encounter with UFOs occurred during a routine flight as a commercial pilot. He describes witnessing unidentified aircraft exhibiting extraordinary maneuvers that defied conventional explanation. Despite attempts to communicate with air traffic control and military authorities, Grush was met with silence and indifference, fueling his suspicion of a cover-up. Grush's testimony is compelling, supported by radar data, cockpit recordings, and corroborating accounts from fellow pilots and passengers. His harrowing experience raises profound questions about the nature of these unidentified objects and the potential threat they may pose to aviation safety and national security. As the podcast drew to a close, Rogan thanked Grush for sharing his insights and urged his listeners to remain open-minded about the mysteries of the universe. He emphasized the importance of continued research and exploration into UFO activities, reminding his audience that the truth may be out there, waiting to be discovered. Joe Rogan's podcast session with David Grush provided a fascinating glimpse into the world of UFO activities and the potential implications for humanity. Through Grush's first-hand accounts and research, listeners were given a tantalizing glimpse into a world beyond our own, where the mysteries of the universe await those brave enough to seek them out. As Rogan often says, keep an open mind and question everything. In the case of UFO activities, this mantra rings truer than ever. With each new revelation and discovery, we inch closer to unlocking the secrets of the cosmos and understanding our place within it. The Role of Bob Lazar Bridging Science and Speculation Bob Lazar is a name that has become synonymous with the UFO community and conspiracy theories surrounding government cover-ups of extraterrestrial technology. His claims of working on reverse engineering alien spacecraft at a secretive facility known as Area 51 have captivated the public imagination and sparked intense debate among skeptics and believers alike. In this in-depth exploration, we delve into the life, findings, crises, and accusations surrounding Bob Lazar, shedding light on the enigmatic figure and the reasons why some people find his story difficult to believe. Born on January 26, 1959, in Coral Gables, Florida, Bob Lazar grew up with a keen interest in science and technology. He attended Pierce Junior College in Los Angeles, where he studied physics. 
before moving on to the California Institute of Technology, Caltech. Despite his academic credentials, Lazar's claims about his educational background have been met with skepticism, with some critics alleging inconsistencies in his academic history. Following his studies, Lazar purportedly began working on classified projects for government agencies, eventually finding himself at the heart of one of the most secretive installations in the world, Area 51. It was here, according to Lazar, that he was tasked with reverse engineering alien spacecraft, a revelation that would thrust him into the spotlight and forever change the course of his life. Lazar surfaced publicly in 1989 when he was interviewed by my former colleague, George Knapp of Class TV, Las Vegas. At first, Lazar spoke only in silhouette and used the pseudonym Dennis. Later, he came forward under his name and with no disguise. Lazar's claims were fantastic, that the U.S. government had, in its possession, nine crashed or captive spacecraft from another world, at least one of them shaped like an actual saucer. Lazar claimed he'd been part of a team hired by the government to reverse engineer the craft, which would unlock for American scientists the propulsion secrets they needed to pave a path to the stars. Lazar said he was fired from his job at the clandestine military base because he brought some friends into the desert near Area 51 one evening to surreptitiously watch a saucer being test-flown. A Lincoln County deputy caught the group leaving the area, and the deputy ratted Lazar out to the government. Lazar's story combined the most compelling elements of alien abduction stories and shadow government conspiracy theories. The tale had a profound influence on popular culture, from cartoons like American Dad to movies like Paul and Independence Day. While publicity surrounding Lazar's amazing claims put Area 51 on the map, it also shined a spotlight on himself, and it wasn't long before people started picking apart his story. Places where Lazar claimed to have gone to college, like Caltech and MIT, said they'd never heard of him. About a year after his initial TV interview, Lazar found himself criminally charged for helping operate what prosecutors described as an illegal high-tech whorehouse. That didn't help his credibility much. As his case worked through the legal system, Lazar produced one of the few bits of physical evidence that he'd worked at a secret base in Nevada. It was a W-2 form, reflecting income of less than $1,000, purportedly paid to him by the Department of Naval Intelligence. Even that form was questioned over its authenticity. Skeptics pointed out that there's an Office of Naval Intelligence within the Department of the Navy, but not a Department of Naval Intelligence. Yet, credibility issues aside, and despite a dearth of physical evidence and lack of corroboration from other scientists, Lazar's astounding tale has not only survived over three decades, but thrived. His claims received renewed attention in 2018 thanks to a documentary produced by movie maker Jeremy Corbell. The documentary, widely viewed on Netflix, led to Lazar appearing on the Joe Rogan podcast, possibly the most popular podcast on the planet. This planet, anyway. Corbell, meanwhile, has been interviewed multiple times recently on network news talk shows. He is the source of at least one recently leaked UAP video that depicts what appear to be triangular shapes moving through the sky. Corbell, in the interviews I've seen, has not claimed the UAP videos show alien intelligence at work. But he did say in his documentary that he believed there was more evidence Bob Lazar was telling the truth than there was that he was lying. Lazar's claims about his work at Area 51 have been met with both fascination and incredulity. According to his accounts, he was hired to work on a highly classified project known as Project Galileo, where he was briefed on the origins and capabilities of extraterrestrial spacecraft recovered by the government. Lazar described the spacecraft as advanced beyond anything he had ever encountered with propulsion systems that operated on principles unfamiliar to conventional physics. He claimed to have witnessed test flights of these craft, 
which exhibited gravity-defying maneuvers and capabilities far beyond those of any known aircraft. Perhaps most astonishingly, Lazar alleged that the government had been concealing the existence of these spacecraft and their extraterrestrial origins from the public for decades, a revelation that sent shockwaves through the UFO community and beyond. Despite the intrigue surrounding his claims, Bob Lazar's credibility has come under scrutiny from various quarters. Skeptics have pointed to inconsistencies in his accounts, discrepancies in his academic and employment history, and the lack of corroborating evidence to support his claims. Furthermore, Lazar's refusal or inability to provide concrete proof of his alleged employment at Area 51 has fueled doubts about the veracity of his story. Critics have also raised questions about his motivations, suggesting that he may have fabricated his claims for personal gain or notoriety. In addition to skepticism from skeptics and critics, Lazar has also faced challenges from within the UFO community itself. Some researchers and enthusiasts have accused him of being a government disinformation agent or a pawn in a larger conspiracy to discredit legitimate UFO research. Over the years, Bob Lazar has weathered accusations of deception, manipulation, and fraud from both skeptics and former allies alike. His detractors have questioned his credibility, integrity, and motives, casting doubt on the validity of his claims and the sincerity of his intentions. Despite the challenges he has faced, Lazar has remained steadfast in his assertions, maintaining that his experiences at Area 51 were real and that the government has been actively suppressing information about UFOs and extraterrestrial technology. However, the controversy surrounding Lazar's claims has taken a toll on his personal and professional life. He has faced ridicule, ostracism, and even threats from those who reject his narrative, forcing him to retreat from the public eye and live a life of relative seclusion. The reasons why some people find it difficult to believe Bob Lazar's claims are multifaceted and complex. For skeptics, Lazar's lack of tangible evidence, inconsistencies in his story, and the extraordinary nature of his claims make them difficult to accept at face value. Furthermore, the stigma surrounding UFO research and the prevalence of conspiracy theories in popular culture have contributed to a climate of skepticism and disbelief surrounding Lazar's assertions. Many people are hesitant to entertain the possibility of extraterrestrial visitations or government cover-ups, preferring instead to adhere to more conventional explanations for the phenomena he describes. Bob Lazar remains a polarizing figure in the world of UFO research and conspiracy theories. While some continue to champion his cause and believe in the validity of his claims, others remain skeptical, questioning the credibility of his story and the motivations behind his revelations. As the debate rages on, one thing is clear. The mystery of Bob Lazar and his alleged encounters with extraterrestrial technology continue to captivate and confound the public imagination. Bob Lazar, a controversial figure in the UFO community, has long been associated with claims of government involvement in studying alien technology. His alleged employment at Area 51 and subsequent disclosures about extraterrestrial spacecraft have divided opinions, with skeptics questioning the veracity of his claims and supporters hailing him as a whistleblower. In the context of David Grush's revelations, Bob Lazar's story takes on renewed significance, providing a framework for understanding the government's purported knowledge of UFOs. While skeptics may dismiss Lazar's claims as fantasy, his detailed descriptions of alien technology and government secrecy resonate with those who believe in the existence of UFOs, public perception, and the quest for truth. The disclosure of UFO-related information by individuals like David Grush and Bob Lazar has sparked a broader conversation about the nature of reality and humanity's place in the universe. 
While some remain skeptical of these claims, others view them as a catalyst for re-evaluating long-held beliefs and embracing the possibility of extraterrestrial life. Public perception plays a crucial role in shaping the discourse surrounding UFOs, with media coverage and social media platforms amplifying both skepticism and speculation, as more individuals come forward with their own experiences and evidence. The pressure mounts on governments and institutions to provide transparency and accountability regarding UFO sightings and investigations. From the subcommittee, we have also heard testimony from former Navy fighter pilot Ryan Graves and retired CMDR David Fravor about their alleged encounters with aircraft of an unexplained origin. Graves recounted an incident with a flying object off the coast of Virginia Beach in 2014. While flying an F-18, he said, he came upon an aircraft that looked like a dark gray or black cube inside of a clear sphere that he estimated to be 5 to 15 feet in diameter and unlike any aircraft he had ever seen. Grave claimed the UAP could remain stationary despite hurricane force winds. He told lawmakers that his squadron submitted a safety report at the time, but that he received no official acknowledgement of the incident. According to the former pilot, UAP encounters in that region were not rare or isolated. Graves has since founded Americans for Safe Aerospace, a group that supports aviators who have reported UAPs. He stated that the objects that are reportedly being seen by military and commercial pilots are performing maneuvers that are unexplainable due to our current understanding of our technology and our capabilities as a country. He also added that if everyone could see the sensor and video data he witnessed, our national conversation would change. Retired Navy CMDR David Fravor offered the panel his own eerie account of a UAP encounter that was captured on video in 2004. The Pentagon released the video to the public in 2020. Fravor described being flabbergasted when he and three other service members saw a white tic-tac-shaped flying object emerge over the San Diego coast in California. There were no rotors, no rotor wash, or any visible flight control surfaces like wings, he said of the UAP. As he and the other pilots tried to get closer to the mysterious craft, it rapidly accelerated and disappeared right in front of our aircraft, leaving no detectable turbulence. Implications for Humanity Facing the Unknown As humanity grapples with the possibility of alien visitations and the existence of advanced civilizations beyond our planet, profound questions arise about our place in the cosmos. The revelations shared by David Grush and others challenge us to confront the unknown with courage and curiosity, transcending fear and embracing the opportunity to expand our understanding of the universe. Whether UFOs are a figment of imagination or tangible evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence, their significance lies in the questions they provoke and the mysteries they represent. As we continue to explore the vast expanse of space and the depths of our consciousness, the truth about UFOs may ultimately reveal more about ourselves than about any potential visitors from beyond. The revelations made by David Grush and the ongoing discourse surrounding UFOs serve as a reminder of the boundless possibilities that await humanity in the cosmos. Whether these sightings are the result of misidentification, experimental technology, or genuine encounters with extraterrestrial beings, their impact on our collective consciousness is undeniable. As we navigate the complexities of the modern world and confront the unknown, let us approach the phenomenon of UFOs with an open mind and a sense of wonder. In doing so, we may discover not only the truth about our cosmic neighbors, but also the profound truths about ourselves and the universe we inhabit. Thank you for watching. Check out another interesting video by clicking on the link appearing on your screen right now. See you on the other side.